Hey guys, what's up? It's Dan here. Welcome to another edition of the Dan Q Review. Today we are going to be talking about Assassin's Creed Revelations. Uh, next game in the Assassin's Creed franchise. Uh, once again, we follow Ezio Alatore, and we actually tie in the game to kind of feature both Ezio and Altair from the very first Assassin's Creed. But anyway, we'll get into that in just a little bit. First up, brief synopsis, synopsis summary, whatever. Uh, Assassin's Creed Revelations is available on Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and PC. It always comes out PC a little bit later than console, but it will release on PC in due time. Now, uh, it is all. It is basically a, what, what would you say, a third-person action-adventure slash open-world sandbox type game. Uh, very unique, um, although not anymore. <laughs> Anyways, it is developed by Ubisoft Montreal and published by Ubisoft themselves. Okay, so there's a lot to say about the new Assassin's Creed Revelations game. Um, some things good, some things bad, of course, um, but it's hard to really put into words. Now, in terms of graphics and sound, honestly, there's nothing new here, but the thing is, it's not good or bad, you know what I mean? So, I'm not going to put it as a positive or a negative, because quite frankly, the graphics and sound haven't changed. So and they were fine before, so there's no reason to give it a good review or a bad review, so they'll just stay neutral, so I won't put that into the review of this game. Um, a few of the things that I really liked about it. Okay, well first off, um, they had added a lot to this game. Um, some things is minimal, like one of my favorite new aspects of the game was the fact that you could have, uh, you unlocked a new, uh, I guess, blade, which they called, I forget, it's like the Reach hook? I can't remember. It's basically just a hook that takes place of your one uh, hidden blade. And basically it allows you to climb way faster. Because in the older games you had to do, you had to unlock the ability to do the leap jump when you're climbing and then you had to grasp A or X or whatever game, whatever console you're playing on. And then you would get that extra gap without having to climb up bit by bit. This removed that whole thing and you'd have it right from the beginning so you could climb it like Mach 10 speeds. And that I really liked about it. The, the new addition of the, the hook was really nice. Um, also, they, they added a few things. Um, they added, uh, well, obviously, a new storyline. Uh, although the thing was, uh, like, like I said, before I could really get into that, they added little dinky things. You know, they may be, they may be kind of useless or not really pertinent to what the game should get. But like I said, you got the hook, and you've got like a new edition of bomb making, which was kind of interesting. Uh, I didn't use bombs all that much. I didn't really find a, a big need for them. But they are kind of, they are putting new little things in the game, which I kind of liked. So little itty bitty things to make the game a little different, uh, a little bit different, excuse me. And uh, it helped. It helped with the gameplay. It made the gameplay a little more enjoyable. Um, they also introduced a a new mode. Um, it was basically like a defense mode, like you'd capture dens like you normally would, except uh, if, you, if you didn't take over the territory in that area, the Templars could take over and attempt to attack your den. You have to do it like a tower defense type game, where you'd have to have like archers and riflemen, and then even some just like ground attack guys, you can build a, like a wall with different weapons like a flamethrower cannon, etc. Just build up the fortress to prevent these guys from attacking you and, you know, having you to recapture the base. At times though, what I didn't like about that, okay, well first off, it was neat that they added more content, but it, it kind of made you stop, like make the game completely stop, and... Basically, you have to stop whatever you're doing to go save your one den that was being attacked. And I thought that was a little ridiculous, because I'm like, okay, right now, I want to get this storyline continued. I don't want to have to go do a tower defense thing, and I'd rather just complete this, this one mission and advance my character. Instead, all this did was give you maybe experience and whatnot, uh, but other than that, I don't think they needed it. So as a negative, I kind of think they could have gone without the tower defense aspect of it. Like, I actually got a little upset when I first had to do it. I was forced to do it. I felt like I was forced to do it. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I can't even get in there to activate it because you had to be, um, you had to be completely incognito or whatever. And you had to be, um, actually inside the base to recapture it. So you had to somehow sneak your way inside even though there's Templars running all over that damn area. 
So it made it very difficult to even start the mini game. So that was kind of annoying, but uh, negatively, I think that could have taken it out. I, it felt like just an excuse to make, you know, make the game longer. Uh, it really wasn't needed. It didn't. It brought the game to a complete standstill every time you did it. It didn't progress story. It did nothing of the sort. It was just something on the side that you were kind of forced into, which I didn't really like. But um, it did add something, and I'll give them that. Like I said, that it adds to the little dinky things that this game, you know, brought back. But, let's just go back onto this one. Um, I'd like to bring up the controls once again. The controls feel good. I like the way the controls are. It's Assassin's Creed, the controls are good. Um, you know, they didn't add anything new. Uh, everything's basically, like, you can jump into an Assassin's Creed game and you'll be right there with the controls. You, you won't really worry about it. Unless, of course, you've never played them before. In which case, they could be, you know, take some time. But honestly, the controls are nice. Once you get a feel for the free running aspect of this game, you'll pretty much be like flying across everywhere uh, with no troubles whatsoever. Just you know, completely, just literally, just free running. And, and that one, that was one of my favorite aspects. This game made the free running a aspect so much better because you could, like I said, I mentioned a few times in the playthrough that I could honestly come back to Assassin's Creed Revelations, not do a single mission or anything related to the storyline or anything like that and just climb the roofs, climb buildings, jump, use the zip line new f with new feature, uh, use the zip line, just climb, just run from one side of the city to the other. And honest to God, I had I said it's like super relaxing. And I like that. They f it felt like the free running was improved in this game. So for someone who thinks like the whole parkour element is really 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 entertaining and exciting, that was a bonus for me. Now, let's move on to something a little more, well, let's just say, uh, negative. Okay, as you notice, this is called Assassin's Creed Revelations. Um, first, it went Assassin's Creed, so Assassin's Creed 1. Then they released Assassin's Creed 2. Then they released Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, and now Assassin's Creed Revelations. What's the difference? Assassin's Creed... The, this title and Brotherhood should actually be called Assassin's Creed 2 Brotherhood, Assassin's Creed 2 Revelation. Because you're still playing as Ezio, there's nothing new to anything of the story, except for maybe the fact that Ezio is now old as hell. He's like 52, 54, something like that. And uh, he still has the ability to do what he, what he did when he was young, and then some. Which didn't seem that realistic. So the fact is that this game feels like shovelware at times and unfortunately it seems like Ubisoft was trying to get just a cash grab and normally I expect more from them but honest to god I was just like what what's going on here you know because like it didn't explain anything like if you guys remember from Assassin's Creed Brotherhood uh, you do follow Desmond's story. Desmond's story actually plays a key role in this game the fact of the matter is though you have no contact with the outside world in this game, you had the, or sorry, in, in the previous games, you had the ability to lead the Animus. In this game, you are trapped in the Animus, and you could be, like, forever, unless you figure out the plot holes of the story by, by following Ezio and Altair's stories together at the same time. And you have to do it for yourself without help from the outside world. So basically, Desmond is, could potentially be trapped in the Animus forever, he, in fact, uh, meets and associates with Subject 16 on many occasions, and he tries to give him, you know, he's like, I'm trapped in here forever, but there's no reason why you should be, so he's basically helping us along the way, you know, trying to, uh, I guess, provide his, you know, his intelligence about the Animus and the ways we can, the, the one few, many, you know, the ways we can get out of it. Um, now... Since that, it doesn't really expand the story, it did kind of feel like, you know, like I said, uh, well, when you play as Ezio and Altair, it was neat because with Altair's story, you actually got some closure, because in, in the first game, you didn't really know what happened to Altair, because you would, you'd, uh, you know, when you, I won't spoil Assassin's Creed 1, although you've probably played if, you, if you're watching this review now, but, um, uh, I can't remember his name. Al Walim or Al Mualim or something like that. He was basically the leader of the assassins, and he became basically a big douche. Long story short, 
Altair had to stop him from using the uh, the apple, which is basically like a powerful device and um, a powerful weapon that controls people. And I had to stop him. And then once we did, that was it. This game closed on that, and it actually advanced in years. You found memory fragments, which I thought was really neat. A really cool aspect of the new storyline. Um, and you basically relived Altair's memories to find out where you can find this new apple that, that uh, needs to be destroyed. So in terms of storyline, actually, the new one was an improvement. I actually enjoyed the new storyline. It was nice and lengthy, so you don't have to worry about that. It was detailed. It was different, which was neat. So, but other than that, the game is very similar, but I know f that next, the next Assassin's Creed game is going to be called Assassin's Creed 3, and it will not include Ezio or Altair. It'll basically be Desmond trying to find the last Apple of Eden or whatever, and f maybe, you know, finish off the Assassin's Creed series. But we'll have to see. Now that's the single player. Not bad experience for single player. I think it was good, good money's worth. I had a lot of fun with it, to be honest with you. I, ha I had fun playing Assassin's Creed. Now onto the multiplayer. The multiplayer was actually extremely well polished. In, in, in Brotherhood, it was good, but in this one they advanced on it. They saw what they did wrong and they, they basically took it and made it ten times better. So if you like the, the multiplayer for Brotherhood, you're going to love the multiplayer for Revelations because there's way more things. They cut out the cheapness of it. They cut out anything like, you know, they made it more difficult and therefore more even for people. Uh, there were more characters, there was more abilities, you could customize your characters, avatars, there's many levels. They actually introduced a prestige element where you could get to level 50, prestige, level 50, prestige, prestige, and so on and so forth, so, much like Call of Duty. Although I believe there's 99 or 100 prestige levels, which is pretty crazy. If you have that much time on your hands, you sir or madam need to see some sunlight. But <laughs> anyways, the multiplayer was well polished, I enjoyed it. Uh, it is it is something that is that was needed in the game for sure, especially if you liked it. If you liked the multiplayer from Brotherhood, you're gonna love the multiplayer in Revelations. I can guarantee that. So let's recap really fast. What's good about Revelations? Well, you've got um, the new additions. However minor they may, may be, the new additions were really nice. I enjoyed them. Um, little things like the new hook ability. And the the um, the new tower defense mini game, while it was kind of entertaining and it was new, at the same time it wasn't needed and it kind of stopped the game dead as a negative. Um, the controls were comfortable and familiar. Uh, the storyline was good. I liked the storyline. The, the free running aspect I loved. And finally, on, on the negative though, uh, it does feel like they are just pushing this out as another game, you know, nothing, it's pretty much the same game. It's too similar to the other games and they need to move on and try something new because the storylines are, while they're good, they're too similar and we're kind of tired of seeing Ezio at this point, even as, especially when he's old. And finally, the multiplayer, well-polished, well, well-oiled well game, I like to say. So if you like multiplayer, you're going to love this one. Now, what do I want to rate it? Now, although... Um, there was the similar aspects from the other games and uh, not a whole lot of change. There was enough to entertain me and, and make me want to play it again, especially with the multiplayer. So I'm going to rate Assassin's Creed Revelations an 8 out of 10. Uh, I know that seems like some people may think that's high for a game uh, that seems kind of, I guess, old. Or not old, so, but uh, old ideas, you know, just redone. Because that's what this is, pretty much. You know, it feels like Brotherhood. I thought I was playing Brotherhood with a few little bit of uh, additions to it. Um, but I did like it. It is a game worth getting, for sure. Especially if you like Assassin's Creed games. It's a new story. If you like new story modes, you're going to like this one, for sure. The storyline is good. I loved it. Um, so I'm going to give Assassin's Creed Revelations an 8 out of 10. Pretty good score. Uh, just the only thing I wish they'd do is move on. And they said they will be doing that with Assassin's Creed 3, which is the next Assassin's Creed game. And maybe that'll bump up the score even more. Because Assassin's Creed is a great series, a lot of fun to have. You know, it's a really fun game to play. So that's it for my review of Assassin's Creed Revelations. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope it helped you make a decision on whether or not you want to play it or not. But anyways, 8 out of 10 once again, guys. Thanks, everybody, for watching. And I'll see you guys later.